Welcome in. If you have not seen this movie, you probably shouldn't be here, but with that said, let's review Children of Men. Pull my spoilers. Directed by Alfonso Cuaron, I have wanted to talk about this director since I started doing these film reviews, and since way before. I started doing the reviews because I was so angsty about wanting to talk about these directors. Alfonso Cuaron directed Itumama Tambien, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which is the only Harry Potter movie that I've seen because he directed it. Gravity and Roma. Roma and Itumama Tambien are the closest in terms of grounded, hyper-realistic. Harry Potter, Gravity, those get pretty out there. <laughs> Clive Owen as Theo, Julianne Moore as Julian, Chiwetel Ejiofor as Luke, Michael Caine as Jasper, Claire Hope Ashete, the most important role in the film, this was only her second movie, and Pam Ferris as Miriam. We open on a news broadcast which gives you the state of the world. In just a few sentences, we learn that all immigrants are being deported, first off. It's like population control. That's a big theme in this movie, or population issues. Another thing we learn is that a man was beaten on the street by a mob because he spat in another man's face. This world is almost how Mad Max starts, that world. Before Mad Max was a wasteland, it had to start somewhere with a decline. This story is a great depiction of what the beginning of an uncivilized, dystopian world would look like. The Book of Eli does a, does a similar thing. The last bit of information that we learn is that the youngest man in the world, they call him Baby Diego, who is 18, he's just died. Meaning that not one baby has been born in 18 years. The world has become infertile. What a scary thought. Imagine the baby counter at hospitals just stops counting. The entire coffee shop is watching the news. In a wide shot, everything, everybody's in focus. Huge depth of field. Theo scoots in between everybody to get his coffee. He really doesn't care. He does not seem to care about what's on the TV. Takes his coffee outside. Everything is gray and dusty. You literally see people on carts and buggies. As he's putting alcohol into his coffee, the shop that he was just in explodes out of nowhere. It's almost like instead of looting stores, people are just kind of used to terrorist attacks happening all over cities now. Savagery is increasing, but people still have to go to their jobs and work as if none of it's even happening. As if the world isn't going to end in a few decades. If nobody else is born, civilization whittles away. This was the second explosion in a month, Theo casually states. He takes a day off work, understandably he's just been in a terrorist attack, but he uses Baby Diego dying as the excuse to leave. I'm not sure why he doesn't say he's just been in an explosion, but maybe the Baby Diego excuse has a lot more weight to it. So, whatever, but anyways, he takes a, he takes a trip to his friend's house, Jasper, who has this whole hidden property with a secret entrance and a ton of cameras, alarm system, in this home, we see a picture of Theo and a family that we can assume he doesn't have anymore. It's a wife and a child. Jasper cares for his very sick wife, and he's my favorite character in the whole movie, Michael Caine. It's just, it's unexpected that he would play this kind of a role because he's a pothead, he's a pot grower, he's a hippie, super long hair. He and Theo share a joint, and it's a, he's a really good friend to him. He tries to make him laugh, put him at ease. They talk briefly about the state of the world, and that dialogue doesn't feel like blatant exposition. All of the information given to us is done really creatively. They don't load the dialogue with all the information we're supposed to know. Show, don't tell. This, this movie is a masterclass in showing us, not telling us. Letting us figure it out, never underestimating the audience. We want a puzzle, and this movie is a great puzzle. Out of nowhere, Theo's kidnapped. He's just thrown into a, a van. It's his ex-wife who has put people up to this. He hasn't seen her since their son died, which was close to 20 years ago. She's involved with an organization that needs to forge immigrant papers to get a woman through immigration under the radar. Immigrants are not welcome in this country. But there's something really important about this woman that Julian and her team need to keep top secret. No questions asked. Theo doesn't know any of this, though, and he doesn't really want to help them forge transit papers. He doesn't understand. He does so reluctantly because he's being offered a lot of money, even though he says he doesn't need it. I don't need your money. It looks like you do. Plus, it would just be good to have the way that the world is, you know, the direction it's going. He does have a contact who could possibly get some transit papers, and acquiring them is actually really tricky and difficult on such short notice. 
All he can do is get papers that allows, that requires Theo to travel escort this woman, escort her through immigration. He's able to sque squeeze a few more thousand dollars out of the deal too. Now it's time to take a trip as we enter into the second act. Julian, Theo, Luke, Miriam, and Key are all in the car. Hours later as they're approaching their first destination, they're ambushed by this violent posse. There's a flaming car in the middle of the road, dudes on motorcycles shooting at them, crazy people on foot with weapons. It's an insane scene. Not only that, it's an eight minute long take. The shot that they used, the director even yelled cut because they got blood on the camera, but they just kept going. They were really crunched for time, so they had to at least complete the shot and get a full take. They can do it again some other time, whatever, but they had to get it done. Julian gets shot in this scene. Right in the neck, she dies. The person leading this operation is now dead. The trip is now heavily compromised. For that scene, they cut the roof, the ceiling out of the car and stuck a ro rotatable camera in there so it can just rotate. The camera actually even gets out of the car when Luke shoots those two officers, thus now making them all fugitives. Julian dying breaks Theo. The image of him crouched down on the ground crying about Julian shows that this guy is just some feeble man. He's not some action hero. He likes his comfort. And right now, he finds himself way out of his comfort zone. Theo even wears flip-flops for the back half of the movie. But he has to take over the operation when he finds out that Key is very, very pregnant. The first pregnancy at all in 18 years. Now he understands Julian's adamacy in completing the mission getting Key to a safe haven. Luke even says, now you know what's at stake. They've made it to their first refuge and there's more people from their team there. They can convene and discuss a plan going forward. Theo says, make it public, with the right accent. He wants them to go pregnant, pregnant with the publicy? Theo wants everybody to go public with the pregnancy. It would be great for the world to know right now the world would stand still to know that a baby is being born. It would be a global event. Theo's opinion is in the minority though, and he's outnumbered. They let Key decide, and she chooses to have her baby in secret going against Theo's advice. Unfortunately, neither her nor Neo at this time know how many of them, how many of the people at this refuge have their own plans and their own agenda in regards to the baby. This is the biggest bargaining chip in the world. To take this thing hostage or for ransom could potentially mean billions of dollars in their wallet. Theo overhears one of these plans and he knows it's time to go. It's time to leave. He gets Key and Miriam and they make their escape out of this, out of this refuge to the safe haven. That is their final destination. Luke is not a good person. He doesn't have everybody's interests, best interests at heart. He also had place in the ambush that got Julian killed. He made sure of it. The scene of them escaping is brilliant. So intense without a lick of music. It's just ambient sound. Farm animals, because they're on a farm. Mud stomping, a car engine. I have such a fear of being chased by someone. Like if I'm running and I know they're behind me and I can't see them, I freak out. I would lose all control of limbs. This movie touches on that fear just by having the bad guys right behind Theo and the, and the women as they're trying to escape. They can't shoot though because they can't risk killing Key or the baby. My chest hurts during this scene. So Theo drives them to a personal refuge of his, Jasper's property, which soon becomes compromised as well. The bad guys know where to find them. I'm, I'm not sure how. I don't really know how they found them. This unfortunately leads to Jasper getting killed in this scene because he sacrifices himself to make sure that Theo and the women can get away. It's a heartbreaking scene, but it's also funny because Jasper's about to get shot and he just goes, pull my finger. Then the bad guys shoot him. Luckily, Jasper gave Theo a plan that works for them. A prison guard that he sells weed to is going to escort them through immigration safely. That's at least the new plan. Theo, Key, and Miriam continue running on their way to complete the mission. They're being chased by danger, but they also have to go through danger to get to the human project, which is their, their safe haven that they're headed to. I, I, I. Miriam tells the story about when infertility first started happening, and she says, I was there at the end. And Theo says, you'll be there at the beginning, giving lots of hope and meaning to Key and her child. Even though she's talking to Miriam, that sounded confusing. What was the end of one world? Sure, yes, but there's the beginning of a new world simply because this baby is being born. As they're being transported through immigration and still trying to keep the pregnancy under wraps, Key starts having contractions. This is not good. 
but it's such a great way of heightening the stakes, heightening the intensity for the climax of the movie. On the bus that they're on, he can't stop groaning from the pain of the contractions, and the police start asking her what's wrong and escalating the situation. Miriam sacrifices herself, not, you know, she doesn't die, but she distracts the cops. They end up hitting her, getting her off the bus, and they put, they hood Miriam and they put her in an assembly line with everybody else. Every viewing I've had, I found this movie in college. I always thought Miriam died, like, right there, but I guess not. They're just putting her, they're just, like, caging her. Sure, okay, fine. That, that makes me feel better. Kia officially has her baby in some dungeon-y bedroom in an abandoned building. A war starts to break out among civilians and the army gets involved. I love when everything comes to a standstill when the baby is revealed. It's a spiritual, angelic sequence where everybody stops fighting in just awe of what they see. Then the war starts happening again. But Theo and Key make it onto the boat. Jasper had set up for them. Actually, they had to revise a plan. There's another civilian that they encounter that takes them to a boat. So it's like plan C at this point. Definitely not plan B. <laughs> wow. I think I blew a gasket. Okay, where was I? The war are going to happen? Oh, yeah. Out on the boat, they find uh, the bobbing Bowie that they're looking for. The human project, or the safe haven that they're going to, this is where they pick people up at, so they are at the right place. Theo and her are just sitting on this boat. Theo got shot in the whole ordeal, and he sits there, and you can tell he's, he's passing away. And Key says that she's naming this baby Theo. And it, you, can, you know that it means so much to him in that moment, and then he dies. And Key just sits there rocking with her little baby and a dead guy. She, Theo? No, not you. We can assume that the human project is probably real, and her and her baby are about to be rescued and go on to save the world, all thanks to Theo and Julian's efforts. And that's the end of the movie. You know, animals are shown to love Theo throughout this movie, there's an animal in almost every single shot of this movie. And it gives Theo a, a Noah's Ark kind of feel. There's definitely inspiration there in parallels. Theo is saving civilization by saving a baby. Noah saved civilization by saving his family and two of every kind of animal. There is a lot of religious and faith exploration questions asked depictions in humanity that are, look a little bit different. If things had shifted in our society, what would they look like? And for that, I really, truly love this movie. Almost every shot is handheld as well, giving it a really gritty documentary style that makes the movie work as, as well as it does. I feel like I've hardly scratched the surface as far as like all of the symbolism in this movie. The religious faith explorations are done very creatively and subtle, although some ways not so subtle, but it totally works. This is my kind of science fiction movie. Don't give me aliens, don't give me this and that, invading us. I don't like mummies, I don't like vampires. I can, I can do Lord of the Rings, Star Wars hardly. But when it comes to dystopian futures, I'm all there, dude. Children of Men, Book of Eli, Elysium, they all do really, really cool explorations of that. So, that's my review of Children of Men. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go watch my other reviews. Stay tuned for more reviews, too. You can keep up to date on Letterboxd. I review movies on there as well. And yeah, bye, guys. Peace.